What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for week three in the Pokemon Premier League against the San Francisco Arcaniners, whom are coached by Septile MC or George, one of the newcomers to Division 1 for the Pokemon Premier League. Uh, so this is going to be our quick little team builder here. And I had a heck of a time deciding on what was most important to bring for this matchup. You can see his team there to the right. Jirachi, Salamence, Azumarill, Tangrowth, Mega Sableye, Porygon 2, Metric, Hitmonlee, Teflosion, and Crustle. And to the uninitiated eye, it looks like, oh, those don't seem like they go together. But it is really hard to prep for everything that he has available here. Uh, so in that case, I end up prepping for what I think he is most likely to bring. And so that takes us to the team that we have for this week. Now up first, I'm going to have Garchomp here, a nice scarf set. Garchomp is here not only as a general check to Scarf Jirachi, Scarf Salamence, to a lesser extent non-Scarf Manetric, which I don't think will show up. I think if he brings Manetric, it'll be Scarf for sure. Uh, it also allows a very soft check to Hitmonlee and Crustle, as well as Teflosion just trying to spam um, anything. If that, if anything besides Manetric comes Scarfed, Garf Chomp, Garf Chomp, Scarf Chomp, Scarf Chomp has it covered. Here I did decide on the moves, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Fire Blast, and Earthquake, and Outrage. Excuse me, I just got off work so I am very tired apparently. What is going on with my brain? These moves here get fantastic neutral coverage against this whole team, uh, barring reeling the Azumarill, which still takes a hefty bit from uh, Earthquake, right around 40%, assuming a good HP investment. But uh, I did have to go naive, just in case he brings Tangrowth. I need a strong way to hit that, and going with a very meager investment and naive is a stronger way to hit Tangrowth, because of Tangrowth's base 50 defense. Uh, Whereas that very, very beefy defensive stat it has means that I can't just go Jolly and try Poison Jab. Because that really won't do any damage, whereas Fire Blast will do a very nice amount of damage. Um, the specific speed there is just to make sure I outspeed Jirachi and Salamence and Teflosion, because they're all base 100. And so why not pick up a couple of extra special attack EVs in the process? Our next 10 member, of course, is going to be Mega Blastoise. He is going to be the first part of a very bulky defensive core because I am very afraid of Belly Drum Azumarill. We are also afraid of Dragon Dance Salamence and I need to be able to uh, take status and kind of soak up things from like a Mega, Mega Sableye, Porygon 2, uh, even to a lesser extent uh, Jirachi. Um, if any of them are using Thunder Wave, Toxic, or uh, if Mega Sableye wants to use Burn, Rest Talk, Blastoise can come in, absorb it, go to sleep, Scald and Ice Beam, even uninvested, do a pretty good amount of damage to his team just because of Mega Blastoise's great special attack stat. And by going with a very hefty defensive investment, I am able to take hits from plus six Azumarill barring Play Rough, which I should outspeed, and then I at least have a chance to burn if I'm in that situation. Uh, I can, with the nice hefty HP investment, I can even take at least one Thunderbolt from a Manetric or a Giga Drain from a Tangrowth. Uh, not so much a Leaf Storm. Um, I just want to have something reliable to pivot back out into. But the trick here is going to be to preserve Blastoise as much as I can because he's going to be taking a lot of weaker resisted hits. Um, I'm assuming Porygon 2 is going to be making an appearance in this battle. So with Porygon 2 running Thunderbolt or Discharge, uh, I, I really need to get good residual damage on it or just pressure it in some way if I'm in there with Blastoise. Because if it's a very defensive Porygon 2, then it can't really 2-hit KO Blastoise anyway. So really I'm only worried about an offensive Porygon, which is nice. That's nice to get rid of that worry. Uh, on the off chance that Sceptile MC tries to bring... Um, the Shell Smash Crustle that he used so appropriately in week two. That is what Blastoise is here for as well. Blastoise also stops unburdened Hitmonlee. If he happens to be running Reckless, that's going to be a little bit of a bigger problem. But um, Golbat can kind of handle that. But if it's unburdened, Blastoise is our guy to just kind of come in there and basically put a stop to the sweep. Because if it's unburdened, I don't have to worry about Reckless High Jump Kick, basically. Uh, 
just enough speed here to outspeed the Azumarill. Then the rest pumped into my HP and defense, and that's for Adamant Azumarill. I didn't want to put too much speed investment there because I that's in the last ditch effort attempt that I need to fire off a Scald for a possible burn or something like that. Um, so nothing to rely on, but it's still nice to know that I'll speed max speed Adamant Azumarill. Our next teammate is going to be Volcarona, whom I actually struggled with the decision to bring in this matchup or not. You do notice in the team builder there is no Weavile. Uh, and I think that's because he expects me to bring Weavile. So here we're not going to bring Weavile. And so in lieu of that, I have Volcarona and basically Rhyperior. Now you'll also notice that I don't have Quiver Dance on Volcarona. Volcarona is going to serve a very different purpose in this battle. Number one, speeds tie, it speed ties with Jirachi Salamence and Tiflosion. So that is very, very nice. If any of them are running some type of mixed nature or like a bulky Jirachi or something like that, Volcarona can outspeed and KO it. Uh, it also gives me a nice opportunity to play some hacks in my favor if I, if absolutely necessary, because a lot of his Pokemon require on contact moves, such as Jirachi's Iron Head or Salamis's Dragon Claw, Azumarill's Aqua Jet or Waterfall, to a lesser extent, the Hitmonlee. Uh, if those contact moves can have an increased chance of burning those Pokemon and none of those Pokemon want to be burned. Volcarona is really, really nice for that. Whereas I think that Weavile was a little bit more of a liability because I would be forced to switch out a lot against this team. And really I would just be bringing it for the Salamence and everything else would kind of use it as setup fodder, honestly. And I don't think he'll bring Salamence just because of Weavile, but I'd rather not have one Pokemon that's only good against his one of his whole entire team and have something that can come in on several team members here. Now every time we see Mega Sableye, that's a fantastic time to bring in Volcarona. I do have Fire Blast, Hidden Power Ice, Giga Drain, and Roost, and I was very fortunate that I already bred my Hidden Power Ice one, so I had that good to go, I just had to train it. But uh, Roost is here because we don't actually have proper hazard removal this week, and uh, we'll be using Life Orb. I don't plan to be switching Volcarona around too much. Honestly, it just needs to come in and hit and hit hard that's what I want Volcarona to do. It is a nice secondary counter to the um, Mega Sableye. Tangrowth can carry rock type coverage, but it can't take a Fire Blast unless it's Assault Vested. Uh, so if Tangrowth has any prior damage, we're going straight for that Fire Blast. Hidden Power Ice destroys the Salamence unless it has a Yachi Berry. Uh, and then of course Jirachi gets hit by the Fire Blast as well. A very bulky Porygon 2 can take three Fire Blasts before being KO'd, but if he's max physical defense, um, then I can possibly two-hit KO it. I didn't want to go modest because then I'm losing out on those speed tiers. Uh, Roost is really just there because if I can predict him to switch out or predict, like if he's just sitting in there with Porygon 2 or something like that and I can Roost and get my HP back when he's expecting me to just go down, that'll give me a little bit of extra longevity. Now this next Pokemon is going to be a really interesting Pokemon to play in this match. I had to get very granular with the IVs here, but I will explain them all. First off, Gardevoir here has Trace. It gives me a little bit of a tech counter to Manectric with uh, Lightning Rod and also to Tiflosion with Flash Fire. Uh, it'll also be very, very nice against Mega Sableye copying Magic Bounce, which will help out with Tangrowth. If I come in on Tangrowth, I get Regenerator, which is also great. Um, I even don't mind copying Jirachi's uh, Serene Grace in this matchup too. So uh, there are quite a few useful abilities to be traced here. I'm also going to use it to determine if Azumarill has Sap Sipper for some weird reason, if he's bringing a weird Sap Sipper set. I need to be aware of that because then I can use um, different coverage options and try, instead of trying to hit it with Volcarona's Giga Drain. Now we do have the moves Moonblast, Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, and Taunt. Since I don't have Hazard Removal, we have to keep them from going up. If he brings Crustle, or Jirachi, I kind of have to assume that those will be his leads to set up Stealth Rock. Uh, but I'm expecting to see either Crustal or Jirachi. I do not think we will see both in this battle. Um, Mega Sableye cannot really do much to a Gardevoir with max HP investment. Uh, even a Shadow Ball is like a three hit KO. Um, now if he starts getting up Calm Mines, then we'll talk about that. But Knock Off uh, is a three hit KO with this investment. the um, I do need to watch out for things like Metal Burst. I think he'll probably bring a more utility supportive Sableye than bringing something like Calm Mind. 
because I did see him bring Metal Burst in his previous matches this season. So we do need to scout for those options first. Um, but being able to taunt the Crustle and the Porygon 2 to a lesser extent, the Tangrowth and the Jirachi, very, very nice options. Stops them from setting up, stops them from statusing, stops them from recovering. I want to do all those things. Now the defensive investment and the HP is on the off chance that I have a full health Gardevoir against uh, a Salamence and uh, he has Iron Tail. Then that way I can live it. That is the only reason I put that investment in there because I need a max HP to help take hits well neutrally anyways. Now the 36 special attack EVs are just there to one hit KO Salamence and Hitmonlee with Moonblast 100% of the time, barring a, a randomly bulky build. And then the speed allows me to outspeed uninvested uh, Jirachi. So if it's a very, very bulky one, such as specially defensive or um, maybe even set up Calm Mind Jirachi, something like that, then we can outspeed it and hit it with a Shadow Ball. So those would be very, very nice options to have. And with my investment, I can even live an Iron Head. And whether or not I get flinched, that's up to the RN Jesus gods. But if I don't get flinched, I can hit it back with a Shadow Ball. This is one of my other win conditions in addition, so my two main win conditions here are going to be um, Rhyperior and Golbat, interestingly enough. Really excited to finally get a chance to premiere um, two new Pokemon on the team here with Rhyperior and Golbat. Rhyperior with Double Dance gets solid neutral coverage against his entire team and there's really not much he can do about it besides the Azumarill. This is yet another reason I decided to not bring Weavile this week. And a lesser reason that I didn't bring um, Rotom or Magneton or Primeape because they all really only get good coverage against some of the Pokemon or they require to be Scarf or Specs or Bandit to get the right damage output that I need. Rhyperior doesn't require any of those options. I can actually give him leftovers and depending on what's left on uh, the San Francisco Arcaniner side, I can Swords Dance or Rock Polish, which is just a really, really nice option to have. Now, very specific EVs here, 228 speed will allow me to outspeed his whole team after a rock polish. Very, very nice there. Uh, and then of course, max attack will allow me, even if I don't get a chance to boost up, then I can at least hurt most of his teammates. I don't like relying on Stone Edge, so my goals are going to be to remove Salamence and Tangrowth before I start trying to do things. I'm really not worried about um, the, uh, I do need to remove a zoom roll before I start trying to sweep, but that's it's going to be easier to deal with the zoom roll in this matchup than it is to deal with Alexa like Jirachi or something like that. Uh, I also need to make sure Mega Sableye is Mega Evolved before I attempt this too, otherwise I'll have a priority Willow West coming my way. Don't really want to deal with that, and I actually can't two hit KO like a max HP max defense Mega Sableye unless I have a Swords Dance up. So I'll need to figure out what type of Sableye he has too. Um, but yeah, for all of his weaker, like I'm expecting him to bring Manectric and Choice Scarf it. So something like that, while it can carry Hidden Power, Ice, or Grass to hit my team, those weaker hits with Solid Rock and a, just a tad HP investment, they're not going to be doing enough to 2-hit KO me. So I am going to be relying on Rhyperior's fantastic natural bulk, at least on the defensive side, and then uh, try to set up one of those two, if not both, during the battle. Now our last teammate, Golbat, it is his time to be premiered as well. Really, really excited to use this one. Uh, of course, shout outs to Frank C. Trode for even giving me the idea for this set. If you remember in the Lithio Battle Association, we actually lost to his Golbat because it was a nasty plot variant against my Slowking at the time. So if you can't beat him, join him. We're going to be bringing our own nasty plot Golbat here. You do notice that I'm running a bold max HP, max defense Golbat with Eviolite and Infiltrator. I'm still pretty worried about Reckless Hitmonlee or uh, even the, the Belly Drama Zoom Roll. So this is giving us a fantastic way to, to take some of that onus off of Blastoise to check those things. I am not bringing Defog on Golbat because Sludge Bomb and Heat Wave get neutral coverage against his entire team. And a lot of his Pokemon fail to, to hit KO Golbat, especially given the hefty defensive investment. Now, um, Jirachi, Salamence, Azumarill, Hitmonlee, and Crustle are all basically kind of set up fodder for Golbat. The Tangrowth can be set up fodder, but I have to be careful of uh, Knockoff here. He's going to have Knockoff. He can he can have it on Azumarill, Tangrowth, 
Mega Sableye, and Hitmonlee, I'm expecting him to have it on the Sableye and the Azumarill. So I will need to figure out who has knockoff and eliminate them before I have Golbat really performance role here. Um, but the fact that Golbat will always live basically uh, plus six hits from Azumarill with the Eviolite and the defensive investment, that is just music to my ears. Because then I don't, if even if I let Blastoise go down by misplaying or just being mean to my Blastoise, I have a secondary thing to help out there. So that's going to be the team um, for the Pokemon that I'm expecting to see from him. I'm expecting to see his Jirachi. I'm expecting to see the Azumarill. I'm expecting to see Mega Sableye and Porygon 2 alongside Manetric and either something physical like Hitmonlee or Crustle. I really don't think he'll bring the Salamence because of Weavile. I don't think Tiflosion has a great matchup against my team, even if he runs coverage, like he can't really touch Blastoise, uh, Hidden Power Electric or Hidden Power Grass. Blastoise doesn't really care about those, so I don't think we'll see that this battle either. Um, and I really am going to have to scout a lot to see what he's bringing, because a lot of his Pokemon are very versatile, can run several different sets, and I don't want to go into this half cock. So guys, I hope you enjoy this team, but this one was a little bit longer, because I did have to get a little bit more granular, but thank you very much for your patience. And now get ready for the battle. Okay, so thank you all so much for watching the team builder. You can see that George actually ended up bringing a completely different team than I expected. Uh, number one red flag, he did bring the Salamence, which immediately to me meant that it was probably either Yachi or Scar Salamence. And then we do also see Hitmonlee and Crustle alongside Tangrowth. Azumarill and Sableye. So really I only expected the Sableye, the Hitmonlee, um, and the Azumarill here. The other three was kind of like, oh, well, didn't see those coming. Now I will say one thing before we start, I actually ended up having an Inner Focus Golbat instead of uh, an Infiltrator Golbat. I realized that my team was susceptible to being flinched to death through Scarf Jirachi, and if he brought Hitmonlee, he might bring Fake Out Unburdened. So I wanted to be able to bypass those flinching options if necessary. Now for the Pokemon that he brought for this matchup, looking at it, I figured he would probably lead off with Crustle, and so that meant I needed to lead with Gardevoir just to taunt him and stop the Crustle from getting up any type of injury hazards. Uh, there was also a possibility that he would lead with Sableye, and in that case I get a free Moonblast, which is pretty nice. Uh, the only other thing he might lead with is with Salamence, just because of solid neutral coverage against my whole team. But even in that scenario, if he goes for Iron Tail, I trace his Intimidate if he has it, and uh, Iron Tail won't kill based off of my investment. So Gardevoir is my best all-around lead, and seeing what he had meant that um, Rhyperior and Golbat were very, very important for this matchup, just because Azumarill, Crustal, Hitmonlee, and even Salamence to an extent, all very physical attackers. And so having max defensive Blastoise or max defense Golbat really made things easier. I was very happy to not see Manetric here, because that means my Scarf Garchomp can revenge kill his entire team, uh, barring a uh, Bandit Azumarill after he's gotten a lot of chip damage on me. But that's why it's very important here that I do not let him get up a bunch of extra entry hazards, because then it allows him to run around if he does have Bandit and Azumarill to do a lot more damage to me. And uh, it also allows Sableye to set up a lot more easily too. Now for this starting match off here, we are gonna see George decide to go with Crustle as his lead, which I was pretty happy to see. Even if he went for an offensive move with my investment, it wouldn't do very much damage and I get a free Moon Blast off. Uh, so I get the Sturdy, so that's nice. We're just gonna go right away for Taunt here. And that ends up being the solid move to go for because he cannot use Stealth Rock now. I did expect him to switch out, but he didn't really have any switch-ins for Moonblast since he did not bring the Jirachi or the Porygon 2. So we just get a free Moonblast, and we also get to see if Tangrowth is invested or Assault Vest, and based on that damage we know that it's probably at least invested in Special Defense or Assault Vested. Uh, I did need to scout for knockoff, so I go into Volcarona hoping he'd use a physical move. I can get a burn here maybe. He knocks off my Life Orb. I also could have gone into Blastoise, but he could have gone for a Grass coverage move as well, so Blastoise without the Mega Evolution didn't really need to take that damage. Um, I didn't figure that he would stay in here, so I just went for Giga Drain. He also could have gone out into Salamence, but I have I have HP Ice on my Volcarona. Uh, but right here, I just figured the Azumarill was probably coming in because the Fire Move was so obvious. Um, and that was really a 50-50. He could have very easily gone into Salamence right there. 
Uh, but here he does go double out into the Salamence as I switch out into my Blastoise. Salamence comes in and I see Intimidate, which is very nice to see. I know it's not a Scarf Moxie Men seeing that. And we're just going to go straight for the Mega Evolution. I get to see if he has Yachu Bear here, even if he has it. I'm going to do over half to him. And the best thing he can hit me with is a Draco Meteor, uh, which after the minus two special attack, he cannot two it KO me with. He does have a chance to two it KO me. Um, if he goes Draco Meteor, then goes Outrage, assuming, you know, some type of investment. But we do see Yachi Bear here, so I predicted that correctly. And getting rid of that very early on is actually reminiscent of my week one battle against Under the Radar, where Yachi Bear being removed early on makes things a lot easier for later. So he goes back out into his Azumarill here, and I still haven't seen this thing attack at this point. I know it's not Belly Drum because he didn't have a Citrus Berry, but he could be Bandit or Assault Vest at this point still. So I just wanted to rest up here because I need Blastoise healthy in order to take on Hitmonlee and to a lesser extent the Azumarill. Azumarill can hit Blastoise with Play Rough or Double Edge, so those are still pretty solid options. He goes for a Waterfall here, nicely predicting me to switch out. Uh, if I had just stayed in and gone for either a, uh, the Sleep Talk there, then I may have snagged a Scald Burn, which would have been pretty nice. But otherwise, Blastoise can't touch Azumarill anyway. Um, he does switch out from his Azumarill here, which proves to me that he's banded. If he were a Salt Vest, he could have lived an uninvested Sludge Bomb. Uh, I do get a nice Poison, which is pretty irrelevant on the Crustle, other than the fact that it's going to be wearing him down as I roost up. Uh, I can't stop him from going for Stealth Rock now, because I don't have taunt on my gold bat and of course i for uh went i guess the defog move in order to have the option to set up now that's nice because i do get the a surprise factor here i don't think he expected me to set up nasty plot because if he if he had expected nasty plot he would not have gone for rock wrecker which i did not see coming and i did not calc for that when i was prepping but gold bat actually is able to live a rock wrecker here um if he had stone edge not only would he he had to contend with the missing chance, but also uh, he would have had a higher crit ratio. So I think Stone Edge may have been a better option there, but Rock Wrecker is such a much cool, a much cooler option, excuse me. Uh, so props for going for the mean move there. But in this situation, since I was able to get up a nasty plot, he had to recharge from using Rock Wrecker, so I was able to get some HP back before knocking him out with Heat Wave. He didn't bring Jirachi, so Heat Wave is really my best move to hit Sableye with. Uh, I really just wanted to see how much damage I could do to him, but I figured he would get the priority Calm Mind this turn, so I decided a nasty plot here as he does go for the priority Calm Mind um, for the one turn that he has priority, at least, from Prankster. Uh, so at least I'm still in that plus two situation for my nasty plot. Uh, <clears throat> with this, I didn't really know how much damage I could do to the Sableye, and I was trying to decide whether to use Nasty Plot or Heat Wave, and I actually ran out of time, and the game chose Nasty Plot for me. So that was entertaining. Uh, I was in a 50-50 situation there anyway. I'm just happy he didn't go for Sludge Bomb or something like that. Uh, but he decides to go for yet another Calm Mind, so at least now I have plus three versus him in this scenario, which is pretty nice. Uh, Heat Wave doesn't really do anything, especially because he has no specially defensive investment right there. And so here I was really just worried about him critting me, because when you get into these wars where everyone's setting up and you can use Roost and Recover and all that, someone's going to get crit eventually. It just turns out that I picked up the critical hit first here, and this crit really soured my taste for this battle, because this is my first time battling George or Septile MC, and I really wanted it to be a good battle. But granted, you can't control the hacks, so we take those, but that that right there was it, it sucked, because I... It, it would have been a different battle, I think, or at least very different dif differential. Um, if uh, if he had taken out Golbat, his uh, Sableye probably would have been missing some HP, and then I could have come in with either Rhyperior or my Garchomp and hit it pretty hard from there. But anyways, though, I did not switch out into my Gardevoir there, just on the off chance he tried to set up. I wanted to keep him honest, because uh, once he got a plus one, then um, I would come in and get negated with my Intimidate from my Trace, but then he would still have higher speed, so if I failed to KO him, that could be a situation where I didn't really feel like dealing with that. But I am able to KO him here with Moonblast after he takes out my Golbat. He sets up Tailwind instead of going for Iron Tail. He did have Iron Tail, but with the Stealth Rock damage, there was a very big roll on whether or not I would live it. Um, granted, he was at minus one, so I probably wouldn't have had to contend with that roll as much. But uh, he does go into a Zoom roll here. 
and Azumarill is banded. He actually goes for Play Rough, which surprised me. I was thinking of switching into Blastoise there, but I also didn't want to give him the pre-Play Rough damage, and he misses it. More hacks in my favor, so that means we're going to be able to take out Azumarill without losing my Gardevoir. Uh, a banded Play Rough had a very good chance to KO my Azumarill, uh, my Gardevoir. And so even though he was banded, it was still a roll for him to kill me, but he didn't even get that roll since he missed. Uh, right here, I know that the Tangrowth has some type of investment or is Assault Vested, so I just want to stay in and go for Moonblast. To keep him honest, um, I was wary of switching in just because Tangrowth gets so many coverage options. It didn't make sense to me to risk that, uh, that I don't know, losing two Pokemon instead of just losing one. And also here I have a chance to get the special attack drop, which would have been nice. He does pick up a poison, which turns it from a roll into a guarantee to a KO, which is kind of annoying. But after all the hacks I've had on him, that's probably fair game. Now I do go out into my Volcarona here because it's the least risky option. Granted, I have a chance of missing, missing Fire Blast, but if he's going to go for a Rock Slide or anything like that, or even if he goes for a knockoff, he's risking the burn chance. Uh, and I am going to be faster than him, of course, too, so that's going to be my least risky chance. And it forces the Hitmon Lee to touch my Volcarona as well with the Fake Out. Which, again, risking that burn chance, playing, trying to get the hacks in my favor, as though I haven't already gotten enough hacks in my favor. Uh, but at this point, with even if Hitmon Lee is adamant, he cannot one-hit KO Garchomp or my Rhyperior with uh, a close combat. He would really need to be reckless Life Orb High Jump Kick in order to one-hit KO my Rhyperior. And even that is, I think, a still a roll on Garchomp. So that is going to be the game. I just bring in Garchomp and go for Outrage here. I would have gone to Rhyperior for style points, but uh, I just wanted to get the rough skin to guarantee that I could take him out there. But he had the defense drops anyway. So, uh... Yeah, that was actually a fantastic battle. Despite all the hacks, I think it would have still ended up going about the same way. If he had hit my Gardevoir with the play rough, then it would have been a roll for him to KO Gardevoir with its investment. Uh, right around, I think, a 56% chance for him to one-hit KO. And then also, outside of that, he would have had to... I would have brought in Rhyperior at that point, knowing that he was banded from the damage he did. And then he would have had something be forced to take an Earthquake. I could have also set up a Swords Dance or a Rock Polish. Um, I could have played around with the different scenarios there. Uh, fortunately, also, in addition to that, if he had been able to KO my Golbat with Sableye, it would have put him in a similar situation where I get to bring in Rhyperior, who of course also had Lumberry, so I could have set up a Swords Dance, gotten the burn, healed the burn with the Lumberry, and then hit him from there. Um, so I don't think that any of the hacks was really game-breaking. If anything, it probably just affected the the pace and the mood of the match. With matches of this caliber where uh, you're having really highly competitive matches, a lot of prep is being put into it, it really makes you feel as though your prep doesn't matter when you have a lot of hacks happen. But at the same token, hacks is going to happen. So that's kind of like how in my prep I was saying, oh, I want to make sure that I can have some hacks happen in my favor if I can by bringing Volcarona and forcing him to touch it. Things like that you can take into account in the beginning of the match. And of course, as Pokemon always says, if you don't want to miss, use moves that can't miss. So uh, I like to put myself in a position where I don't have to deal with as much hacks as I can. But you know, you can't control that. So at the end of the day, I'm just thankful that I had a good battle with George. And of course, he is in the GBA as well. So be sure to go check out his finals match against mv if you haven't seen george play his link will be in the description fantastic battler uh i that's why i was prepping so hard for him because i knew he was going to be bringing some unconventional things and that was my first time battling him so it doesn't really matter how much i watched him battle to really get in there and get the flavor for that uh, of course thank you kelly for the great 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 quality in this upload and um anima did my eternity enders logo which is looking crispy and uh, Kino is actually the one who continues to do the graphics for the Pokemon Premier League. So if you need anyone for awesome graphics, be sure to check all those guys out. And thank you all so much for watching my battle upload. I will see you guys next week when we are going up against the Birmingham Spritzy. And of course, the Birmingham Spritzy are coached by none other than, drumroll please, uh, that's going to be the onesie Bennett or Alex. So really looking forward to battling him again. We have some um, revenge to take from last season. So enjoy that. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.